Welcome to the How Did Show, where interesting people answer the questions, how did I get here? And how in the hell did I get here? With your host, Donovan Cornitz. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me on another amazing episode of the How Did Show. And uh, yeah, we got a really cool uh, special guest for you guys today, a real treat. Um, yeah. Uh, we'll get into it later, but just a little bit about him. Now, this gentleman has lent his voice to many brands in the VO realm, such as McDonald's, the Orlando Magic, Valley Sports, Cartoon Network, and many more. Um, he also is a <laughs> world famous food reviewer and a social media personality with almost 4 million followers on TikTok. If you can believe it, it's crazy. Y'all show some love to my homie, Stefan Johnson. What's up, Stefan? What is going on, boss man? It's an honor to be on your show. I appreciate you having me. Nah, man, the honor's all mine. It's, it's so good to have you on. Um, and uh, yeah, we kind of know each other uh, kind of before TikTok stardom um, through the voiceover world. So it's really dope to kind of see your growth and see you blow up uh, so hugely on social media and otherwise. So yeah, man, it's it's really dope to have you on the show as well. And um, without further ado, man, we're gonna get right into it. Since it's called the How Did Show, the very first question I want you to answer is, Stefan, how did I get here? <laughs> well, as far as like the voiceover game was, um, my voice, to bring it all the way back, my voice dropped at a very early age. So I've been sounding pretty much like this since I was 12. So coming into high school, getting ready to finish high school, misguided kid, didn't know what he wanted to do with life. Um, my guidance counselor told me about a local media school called the Ohio Center for Broadcasting, now called the Ohio Media School. I was like, hey, you should do radio. And I'm like, ah, okay, whatever, sure, whatever. Right. It's like a one-year crash course. I'm like, why not? Let's do something. Um, I'm auditioned, got accepted went through the curriculum, realized that I don't exactly have enough to say to be a radio disc jockey, to hold my own show. But then while I was going through the curriculum, discovered voiceover. Um, so graduated with an interest in voiceover, but still didn't take it seriously um, because I was a manager at a restaurant and I thought I was doing big things in life because I was a manager at a restaurant. Great baller. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was Pizza Hut. I was a manager at Pizza Hut. I thought I was doing well at life. You know what I mean? So I was on a, to put voiceover on the back burner. And plus, I was in a band that was pretty popular in the city. So side tracking, trying to pursue the music thing. And um, then after about four or five years, actually, on the real work world, you know, the nine to five doing office gigs and little stuff like that, I realized every job I've had so far. I've hated and I've switched. I would switch jobs literally every year because the way my mind works, if I get bored with the job, I can't do it well anymore. Yeah, I, shut down. It. I shut down, find something else. And I would always make it, um, you know, I would always do something bigger and better and find a better job with more pay, better hours, more flexibility, less work. And I was never happy. And I sat there and had to think one day, why am I not happy? And I'm like, because I'm not doing, I'm not doing what I really love. And then the voiceover thing started to pop back up in my head. And all throughout that, I was doing small gigs here and there. You know, someone would hear me talk, want me to do something here and there, but it wasn't anywhere near a career. Um, but then once I reached that point of saying, let's take this seriously, about seven, about six or seven years ago, um, found some coaches, found some good friends. You were actually one of the first people I actually linked with on social media, um, you know, trying to build my voiceover community. Right. Um, I started to pick people's brains. I knew I was in your DMs a couple of times asking questions. Definitely uh, slid in the DMs a couple of times. <laughs> exactly. For voiceover. And, yeah. <laughs> and then from there, um, you know, I started to get more voiceover work, build a clientele. And then about two years ago, it got to the point where I was so busy, I would have to call off of work sometimes. I would have to leave work early. I would spend my lunch breaks in my car with my travel voice rig recording jobs. And it got to the point where I was like, you know what? maybe it's time to make that leap. Um, so talk to my wife about it, talk to my family about it, talk to my agents um, about it. And they all said, we got you do what you got to do. Right. And i um, been full-time VO for two years. That's what's up, man. Well, look, it, it's so cool to hear that story because a lot of it kind of parallels a lot of uh, kind of my story. Right. Um, I, my voice didn't change at 12 though. So that's, <laughs> that's a little weird, but, um, but no, it was about, yeah, I think I was about 14 or so, 15. I was a late bloomer and like literally went from people thinking I was my sister on my on the phone to people thinking <laughs> I was my dad on the phone, like within 48 hours. And I got the same thing. You should do radio. You should do radio. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not really. Um, and then 
fast forward, working jobs, you know, once I did know about voiceover and I said, you know, I'll keep it on the side. I need a real job, right? I need benefits and all that. And I hated every job I had, dude, except for one, the very last real job I had, I actually loved. And that's the one where I got completely just like laid off one day, go to, go to work and you don't have a job. Um, so yeah, it, it was one of those, like I was kind of forced into it by a layoff, but yeah. definitely know what you mean about going into work and realizing like this, like, I hate this and yeah. taking really long lunch breaks. Many times my wife's uh, keys were locked in the car, <laughs> flat tires, which was really me running home to do an audition or a gig. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, it's, it's kind of dope to, uh, to hear someone else kind of had a similar experience. Um, so how did, how did the food reviewer thing, like, how did you get there? Well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but I'm a skinny fat man by heart. Um, and um, so the camera for- adds like 50 to 60 pounds. So you're good. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm always a snacker. Right. And I, I know that the one thing that I do have a strong opinion about um, is food. You know what I mean? I have some pretty uh, controversial food opinions when it comes to a lot of things. Milk and, first. Uh, Milk first, you know what I mean? Drums over flats, you know what I mean? Things like that. And, um, you know, so I started just to put a few of my um, opinions out there on like Facebook and Instagram, and it started to really take off um, here and there, or people were engaged with it, I'll say that. And then COVID hit, right? Um, Now, when COVID hit, um, TikTok really blew up. And I just kept hearing about TikTok, TikTok. And um, since I had a little more free time because my band, um, my current band wasn't touring the country anymore. So I had some downtime in between voice stuff. So I downloaded TikTok and I said, you know, let's, let's see what this is all about. And, you know, I made a video, I think it was like um, rating your favorite breakfast sandwiches from like fast food spots. Right. And it was my first video to really, really blow up. Um, so then, you know, following suit, I'm like, let's make another food related video. And I started to branch off into different, you know, types of videos and commentaries and stuff like that, all based around food. Um, and then people started to like seek out my food opinions and then companies started to reach out to kind of have me, you know, talk about their stuff or, you know, to be a brand ambassador here and there. And then about a year and a half later, here we are and 4.4 million or four, almost 4 million followers on TikTok around my food opinions. It's crazy. Yeah. And you did have uh, like a one video about like a, a a day in the life of a voice actor that kind of went yeah. crazy viral and yeah. kind of set things really on fire for you. So what was the the motivation behind that? Well, that was like even before I started to actually, I told it out of order. I told that story out of order. That was the damn first it, Stefan. Video. My bad. I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up, man. Um, <laughs> that was the first video of mine to really, really blow up because that blew up on Instagram, Twitter and um, TikTok. Um, but that came about um, because I was sitting there to do my normal grind, like, you know, wake up, check my email, auditions, record or whatever it is. And I thought, like, I don't really see any videos out here really detailing what we do. I wonder right. if I can tell the story in a minute. I wonder if I can make it a little funny. So I sat there for a couple of hours, setting up the scene, setting up my camera, whatever it is. And I posted it like at 11, like at 11 at night, not thinking anything of it, thinking it was going to get oh, maybe a couple hundred views, a couple thousand views or whatever. And then I was actually woken up at like one in the morning because my phone just kept buzzing. My phone kept buzzing. And it was on like literally about 500 Twitter notifications. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And I look and see, scroll all the way down. And I see that the creator of World of Warcraft found my video and shared it. And that Uh, blew it up. Yeah. uh, Okay. Yeah. And then since I, you know, when you um, repost something from uh, your TikTok, there's that watermark, right? And um, people found my TikTok because of that, because it blew up on Twitter. Right. And and from there, just everything started to really happen. And, and, And then I made the food video, that first one. And that is where things snowball yeah yeah that's crazy man it's like just a testament to the magic of social media when it's when it when it happens for the good Mm -hmm. you know for a good reason or for the right reasons um it can really be incredible and like change your life pretty much you know change your career so yeah no that's that's definitely cool man i i'm i'm like way behind you i actually had people like um so yeah well where's your tiktok i'm like yeah i don't even I, I don't even have it on my phone. You're like, no, you need to. I'm serious, man. You need to do it. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> now I'm like, damn it. Maybe I really need to like figure out how to carve out like 
15 minutes a day to play around on it. But uh, Worth not it. saying I'm chasing, you know, 4 million followers or anything like oh, that. I understand. I understand. You <laughs> so, I mean, it's honestly, it's worth it. I preach every day or at least at least every week on my social media telling people you need to use this social media. It's free marketing, free yeah. branding, free networking. Yeah, yeah. I use the hell out of it for other stuff. I mean, on like yeah. IG and, and stuff, but yeah, you got to explore the TikTok world. Absolutely. You know, we invite you into the realm of TikTok, Mr. Cornet. So and and really quick, if I could, before we get into the next little segment, because exactly. we talked about that video, I'm just going to need to hear like, like moist one time. And then, oh yeah, absolutely. Hold and on then I'll go ahead and see if I can go ahead and follow suit. Oh yeah. Let's go. Let's go real close and real gentle for you. Yeah. Moist. Moist. Mm-hmm. How was that? Was that good? Okay. Tingles. Was, Tingles, that, was that moist enough for you? Was, I'm, I'm moist now. Yeah. Nice. Mission <laughs> accomplished. All right, man. So now it is time for the, the wheel, wheel of what? So there we go. Let's go. This is what Ready. We're gonna do right here. We're going to spin this wheel, and <laughs> whatever it lands on, we need a very pure, honest answer. Okay. Cool. You ready? Yes. All right, let's do this. And you landed on food combo. Oh, how fitting how appropriate. that the food reviewer <laughs> landed on food combo. So what this is, is some kind of weird or strange or unique food combination that you love, even if it's from childhood, mm-hmm. that maybe other people will be like, Stefan, what the hell? <laughs> what do you got for me? All right, so let's set the scene. It's Thanksgiving, right? You're, 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 you're at the table, you're loading up, you know, but your plate is never big enough. Right. So some things are going to touch. Right. Yeah. And you can never control it. Mr. Cornelius. No, it's, it's part of destiny and fate is at work. If you ever have the option, put your macaroni right next to your sweet potatoes. And if they mingle, just let God take over. It's in God's hands and try a spoonful of both together macaroni and cheese and sweet potatoes so you have like the savory salty gooeyness of the mac and cheese and then you have the sweetness yes sir. Of sweet potatoes together so sir. is this something unique to thanksgiving or do you find yourself being like you know what it's time for some sweet potato <laughs> mac and cheese action tonight well that's the thing i haven't most often at thanksgiving because me i haven't mastered the art of cooking really good sweet potatoes so usually i'm over someone else's house eating these sweet potatoes and usually that's around christmas thanksgiving right 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 84th of july because i don't really cook them a lot at my home okay yeah you heard it here first folks mac and cheese and some sweet potato action, some sweet, sweet, moist food action. Moist. Mm-hmm. So, side question for the mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about like some nice homemade with like 15 different cheeses, probably a little bit of artery, uh, you know, unhealthiness? Or are you talking like like some craft or some Velveeta or something? What is your oh, no, preference? Craft uh, Kraft has not touched my palate since I was about five. Um, Velveeta can kind of get a pass if you just need something quick or whatever it is, but preferably that baked macaroni and cheese with the 15 cheeses, some little uh, crispy bread crumb little, topping. You know what I mean? Maybe a little hard crust around the edges that you kind of scoop. Oh, yes, man. Sir. The real stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know what's going to happen after this. Okay, anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> <Man>. <laughs> I think, I think we just had a moment there, man. We had um, a moment. We had a moment. We definitely had a moment. All right. So before this gets too freaking, we get an NC-17 rating on this. So <laughs> now we're going to move into the second half of the How Did Show. All mm-hmm. right. And this is where you answer the question, how in the hell did I get here? So I need to hear about some situation where you were maybe out of your comfort zone, something that was either kind of crazy, wacky, or just something we say, you know what, Lord, if you get me out of this, I will never do this again. <laughs> With the asterisk on it, do not incriminate yourself on here because I will not testify on your behalf. Anyway, so go ahead and give me your how in the hell did I get here story. Okay, well, it's not incriminating myself because I've told this story before and this was about 20, no, it's about 15 years ago. This was before I graduated high school. That I, limitations is up. There we go, exactly. <laughs> um, but I, back when I was 17, I, me and my band, my old, I used to be in an old uh, pop punk band, um, and we were arrested at Walmart because we stole guitar picks and we stole a um, 
t-shirt printing press. <laughs> attempted. No, we attempted. Uh, say, print. okay, an attempted yeah. thievery. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yes. All right. And the thing was that, okay, so it was it was actually about five of us. It was the actual band, us four, and then our bass player's little brother, right? And um, we were all poor kids. You know what I mean? Not poor, but we were kids. We had no money. And we decided that we, our band needed merch. We needed t-shirts. We knew that the Walmart had, Walmart had this printing press little thing to make designs and put them on T-shirts or whatever it is. But it was like 40 bucks, which was like might as well have been a million dollars to us. You yeah. know what I mean? And we were like, you know what? They never have like people walking around. We don't ever see any cameras in here. It's for the greater good. We want to blow up and do good things for the community as a band. Let's take this press. Let's see what we can do. And um, the, dumb, the, the, the first dumb thing was that we... Um, <laughs> We actually had our bass player's mom take us to Walmart. We said that we needed like school stuff or something like that. So our bass player's mom was with us. So the bass player's mom was the getaway driver. Yes. So so okay. f- I didn't say we were smart kids at all, but we that's the first thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I got you. So, okay. Okay. So we had, we initially split up. Like two of us stayed with Miss with our bass player's mom. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bleep that out. We'll fix that in post. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, two of us stayed with uh, our bass player's mom to um, keep her distracted so she didn't come looking for us, uh, the rest of us. And then the uh, other four of us would break off and um, do the deed, right? Um, so it was um, a few of us. I keep wanting to say names, but I don't want to get them out there. No, okay. yeah, no yeah. names. <laughs> <laughs> so so we go to the aisle with the press or whatever it is two of us grab the press and um the ink cartridges because they are the ink cartridges came separately or whatever it is while the other one of us this guy went to the little makeshift um guitar the makeshift instrument because believe it or not walmart shell sells instruments little the cheapest yeah, 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 instruments yeah. in the world but they sell instruments there so i went to their section to get guitar picks of all things and then we how, all how much are guitar picks Oh, guitar picks are normally maybe you get a pack for like five dollars, but that was way too much for us. Okay, so we, I see. All right. I was just wanted to check. I was like, I can't imagine they're very expensive, yeah. but I forgot uh, these yep. are broke children. Okay, broke children. Yep. And so we said that we were going to take all of it. And <laughs> so one of the most fucked up things, though, is that we all reconvened with the mother and uh, us. us um, met her at checkout and went through checkout with her. Right. Um, so we're right by the door. We're thinking everything is good. We're all good. And at then cool, at cool, at cool, at cool, at cool. And then police officer grabs one of us by the shoulder. I can't remember who would grab someone by the shoulder. And was like, we need all of you to go to the back. And we're of course looking at each other trying to play it off. Like what's going on? What do you, yeah. need? what could it be? Whatever it is. We all go to the back. Right. And then it's two more police officers and like, you know, Walmart management. And we're like, um, they show us the footage or whatever it is. We very obviously did it. <laughs> and um, <laughs> side note, if I could interrupt, I worked at Walmart for oh, yeah. almost three years, maybe a little over two years. Walmart security is no <laughs> joke. Like we've found out. Now, I know a lot of people have <laughs> taken things out of Walmart, but I'm telling you, I saw some shit go down when people like i saw a woman a, like a teenage girl tackled to the ground on the sidewalk for taking like eyeliner like they do not play man so anyway go ahead i just had to go ahead and like no I co-sign you. that walmart security is no joke no they're on their stuff they got all five of us and they um put us um in the room showed us it was obviously us but the kicker is only two of us ended up really getting in trouble over it because the only two of us was over the were over the age of 18, me and uh, my lead singer. Everyone else was like 17 and the little brother was like 15. So they all got to go home with the mom or whatever, while me and my singer, we went to jail. And the thing is, it's funny because the way the city we were in, um, the city of Cleveland Heights at the time and Cle- the Walmart was literally right across from their city hall where their jail was you know what i mean so, so they literally just walked you across the we just we just um they drove us but it was literally <laughs> just right across the parking lot and we're in jail now nice. and i ended up this was like on a friday i ended up on i ended up in there for three days until monday damn because my mom was just she was not gonna bail me out she was just over me i was uh, yeah. she would have put me up for adoption if i was not if i was younger than 18 she was just right. over it and um but my friend's mom bailed him out so i was in there by myself with all of these what i thought were hardened criminals if yeah, you would have asked yeah. me at that moment if, all if murderers asked, all murderers all <laughs> just the worst type of people terrorists everything if you know what i mean but the folks in there ended up not being 
terrible people. I learned how to play spades in jail. That's where I learned how to play spades. I mean, if you're going to learn how to play spades. <laughs> yep. And the thing is, is that it may have been destiny for me to become a food reviewer because that place did not have a kitchen. So to feed their inmates, there was a Burger King about two blocks down, breakfast, lunch, and dinner in jail. Burger King. Interesting. The weirdest fucking thing. Breakfast, <laughs> breakfast, two breakfast sandwiches, two croissant sandwiches for um, lunch and dinner Whoppers. Not even regular burgers, just Whoppers. They would buy Whoppers and fries for the inmates. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, maybe this jail shit ain't like, bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not too shabby. I ain't had a Whopper in a minute. <laughs> but um, to, to wrap it all up, um, met the judge. They basically said, okay, you're a good kid. They did a dumb thing because that was literally the first bit of trouble I've ever been in my life. I was damn near a straight A student coming out of high school. And they're like, right. okay, probation for a year. Stop doing dumb shit. I'm like, yeah. I will stop doing dumb shit. There you go. And yeah. then, I mean, so would you say that sitting, <laughs> sitting in jail? So what, what, did you have like a cell or was it one of those big ones where it was like, you know, a bunch of people all in one big cell? Oh, no, we had um, our own little individual cells. But um, during the daytime, all you couldn't have a uh, closed door. So you pretty much um, and it was one big community area that was surrounded by the individual cells. So uh, okay. you had a little bit of privacy. But again, your door is wide open, wide you open, close yeah. it. So. Yeah. So would you say that like a moment of sitting in a jail cell eating like a Whopper with some of your new friends playing spades was your <laughs> moment of looking around and saying, all right, Stefan, how the hell did I get here? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because when I sit there and think about it, like I was picked up for stealing a five dollar pack of guitar picks and now I'm sitting in jail. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm like, OK, you know, and again, I had never done anything remotely bad in my life and i was like the first time i do something i wound up in jail yeah so let's not let's leave this let's leave the whole because you're not really that great of a thief it seems so not at all not at all because again you you watch back the footage they show you right <laughs> and you think you're being inconspicuous you're like, hiding or whatever it is but it and it's ridiculous like, when it's on and, camera and you see that people across the aisle are watching you steal that it's very obvious what <laughs> you're doing you know what yeah. i mean i thought i was james bond and i was not no, definitely not Ocean's <laughs> Eleven action. No. Uh, well, that is a fantastic story. I'm glad you made it out of your thug life situation. <laughs> um, you made it out of gym pop. Um, and, and, and you made it through with just, you know, maybe a little bit of extra calories from some you know, whoppers, whoppers. <laughs> for three days straight. <laughs> and, and that's kind of, and it sets you on your food review path. Man, that is, a, that is definitely an interesting story. And I could, I could see how that would be something that, makes you look within yeah, maybe absolutely. i need to make some different choices in my life <laughs> and uh maybe we'll wait on the t-shirts exactly exactly you know what I mean? uh, well cool man thank you so much for that uh for <laughs> for that great story so uh to kind of wrap things up what do you have going on now what should be what should we be looking for uh coming from you in the near future um, well, my YouTube is always rocking. I, uh, anyone who's familiar with my Instagram, my TikTok, they know I do micro reviews there. But if you want to see full food, food reviews, like eight to 10 minute full breakdowns of the newest and baddest um, snacks and fast food items, and even a newer series where I started to do healthy options on the go, um, my YouTube channel, S. Johnson Voiceovers on YouTube, weekly food review, voiceover and comedy content on there that will always be a priority of mine excellent well thank you so much for for uh, taking time out of your schedule to join me on here stefan so great to see you i'm um, so proud of uh of like all of your growth your success um it's really cool and then at some point you know maybe we'll link up on a food review or something yes sir. Um, <laughs> absolutely but yeah man thank you again for joining me on the how did show and uh yeah man just just keep doing your thing keep living the vo life Absolutely. <laughs> I appreciate you, boss. All right. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me for the How Did Show. So go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. And definitely be sure to look out for more new episodes coming very soon. Peace.